Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and I'm a professor of construction management. Welcome to MS Project The Course. I've developed a series of videos to help you learn MS Project. My background being construction, I do take a construction perspective to it, but it will work for anybody trying to learn MS Project from beginning to being able to be pretty advanced. And I'm adding videos to this series constantly. So I thought I hadn't developed a really good sort of introduction video before, and I thought this would be a good idea. So I'm gonna go through the different videos that I have. I have links that will be listed in the descriptions for each video so that you can download them from Google Drive and you can follow along. That's one of the biggest complaints uh, I've had in the past is people wanted to be able to start with a file that was already progressed that I was demonstrating on so that you could follow along. And in truth, having taught this to tens of thousands of students, I guess if we count uh, online millions perhaps, um, you really learn by following along. So somebody says how to do something and you're actually clicking it. It's pretty hard to learn like a whole program just by watching. It's much easier if you're following along. So I hope that these series of videos will help you to better learn Microsoft Project and use it as a tool to further your project management skills. On my YouTube channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, I have a series of playlists that help you to improve in er many areas of project management and site management and construction. And I hope you explore the playlist there. Uh, I also have the playlist for MS Project The Course, but as I said, I'm gonna be listing all of the videos below in the description and I'm gonna go through them right now just so that you have a good sense of what we're going to be doing in this particular course. So if we think about, if we think about Microsoft Project, and any scheduling tool, but discussion is Microsoft Project, the goal is that you should be able to set up a schedule for your project of what you think things are going to be with your best information right now. The other thing to consider is that everything is going to change and nobody has a crystal ball. And so you have to be able to make iterations and adjustments. You have to take something from a big plan and be able to shorten it up into smaller components that's easier to work with. So Microsoft Project is a tool that will let you do that. And it will also document what's been happening on your project. And if you're using it as a tool to help you better understand and crystallize whatever it is that's involved in your project, that will be a huge advantage in many aspects. So if I look at our uh, schedule that I've got posted uh, here on the screen, um, it's got a whole bunch of things in it. Now you may be a new user to Microsoft Project, you might be a middle user that you've used it for a, a few projects, or you might be an advanced user. What I find with Microsoft Project is there's always new things to learn. Like, I mean, I'm always learning something new. A student will show me something that I didn't see before, and it's like, wow, that's great. How did you do that? Um, so there's, it's, it's, it's a pretty complex program, but fundamentally, you can get up and running pretty quick with it as well. Um, so, and I'm hoping that I can also remove some of the frustrations that um, sometimes happen when something's doing something and you don't really understand why it's doing it. Um, right now, this screen basically has a work breakdown structure. I've color coded it. We go through that in the series. Um, you can see that uh, there's like two bars over here. This means that it's in a tracking mode, a baseline. This was the original plan. This is what's changed. It's been updated up to a status date. You can see there's a variation because when the top bar sticks out over the bottom bar, that means you're behind schedule. And so these are normal things that happen in a project. And so my series of videos is put together to try to take you from the very first steps of how you enter tasks, how you connect tasks, uh, to how you set up a work breakdown structure, how you develop calendars in Microsoft Project, like You've got to put in holidays. You've got to um, make sure that if there's days that you don't intend to work or you have a particular trade or limitations on when they can work, you can develop a calendar. And how do you assign that calendar? And what are the parameters around that? Uh, a big part of Microsoft Project is understanding there's a, it's a database program, essentially. 
and you have a bunch of tables and screens that have to be able to communicate each other. And that's one of the most difficult things is like, wait a minute, what screen am I in and what screen do I want to get to? And that takes a lot of practice. And I believe by working through these videos, that will help you to better understand the screens and be more comfortable with that. And once that you reach a certain critical point where you start to understand that, then things become a lot easier. Uh, resources. Well, we nothing gets done unless you ask somebody to do it. So we get into resources, we get into costs, assigning costs, and we look at it from different viewpoints. A lot of projects, they're not cost loaded. And so I give you information about how to best apply resources and manage that if you're not cost loading. And then we get into cost loading, adding costs and trying to manage it if it is cost loaded. Updating. Well, the whole purpose of doing all this stuff is you want to see how you're doing. And so how do we update? And it's a bit tricky with Microsoft Project. So I kind of have this file naming protocol process that I have that allows you to track your updates, allows you to track your recoveries. Because if you update something, you want to see where you're at. And then when you see where you're at, the next step is, well, how do we get back on track? You don't just throw up your hands and give up, right? So I go through that in the updating process, the recovery process, uh, and file naming protocols process. And from that, we also have to agree that we have changes. So we insert changes. Something new is added to the project, and we have to insert it into the project. And then we want to see, well, what's the impact of this change that we're either contemplating or that has happened on our project. And what are we going to do about it? What's our contractual responsibilities and how do we handle that? The direct method of recovery is a series of steps that I've developed. They spell the word direct to help you to get that time back. Where, where do we start? Well, we look along the critical path and we'll explain what that is in the course as well. We look at basically sooner rather than later. We look at the no or low cost solution. We experiment. That's the beauty of a scheduling software like Microsoft Project. You can experiment. You can say, what if we did this? What if we did that? And of course, when we're experimenting, we can also collaborate. We can communicate. That's the C. And then, of course, if you do all these things, that's going to help your team, whatever team you're working with on the project. So this is how this scheduling software can do a lot of things that people don't realize. And we, we unpack that in a lot of detail here. Um, I go through a lot on um, basically looking through what you did and what has happened. So I go through a lot of looking through what you did and what's happened and reviewing it. I also talk about some scheduling principles that will be helpful in understanding advantages to flow. These are more lean principles that I have in other playlists that I discuss. And if we can zone things and batch things, it's very, very helpful to shorten time durations. The other, course, the other videos that I have is we look at the updating process from a 30,000 foot view. Like, what are we doing here with these updating recoveries? Because I find that a lot of people, they, they get into it and they, they lose themselves in the project and they don't really take the high level view. So we talk about that. Then we talk about, well, okay, that's a high level view. How do we break this up into short terms? schedules, what we call look ahead schedules um, that are more short term in nature and more detailed and more easy to actually put together because the work is coming up very close. If you've got a project that's four years long, like in a construction project, it's hard to get too excited about stuff that's way down. It's also very difficult to really list out everything with any kind of accuracy other than to have time that is basically encased for that work and coming up with a logical sequencing that gives you a really good time frame. But short term, we can really unpack that and collaborate with the players that are involved. And then basically chap video 17 actually right through from 22 to 25 are in doing a whole bunch of checks and balances to make sure that everything has been done appropriately. And by the time you get there, you know what those points are and I explain them to you. And I make sure that you also understand exactly how critical path works and the calculations are done in the software and in real life. Uh, we also look at things like I've been just talking about, 
project management thinking. How do we effectively use Microsoft Project so that we can manage our projects? So thinking like a project manager, but using these tools to your advantage. Tools won't do it for you. You've got to have a good playbook on how you're going to effectively plan, schedule, and manage your projects effectively. All right, and you know, these other videos here are more detailed, but more multiples showing you multiple updates and multiple recoveries and how do we actually instill that and work that through our project. So as we go, I add more things to it and I hope to add more videos and answer questions in this series too because I'm starting to get a lot of questions on different things that are more esoteric specialized if you will and so I will try to have maybe a question series that I will also upload in future. But again, you know, depends where you are. If you're starting from scratch, you may not want to use the first couple of videos. But honestly, I think you should because there's certain things that people, fundamentals, unless you've had real training on Microsoft Project, that people miss. And I've been working with companies, multi-billion dollar companies, and it's surprising like some of the things that commonly get missed. And it's very easy, even if you've been using it for a long time, even myself. I have occasionally these things too that I've got to auto-correct on. So I hope this gives you a good sense of this series. I hope this gives you a good sense of the channel. I hope you subscribe, leave a comment, let me know how it's going, and I wish you a really good uh, connection at learning Microsoft Project and advancing your careers. I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.